So in this short video, I'm going to be talking why I think this 20 to 40 millimeter is the best lens for YouTube. At first I thought the 1635 GM was probably the best for YouTube, but honestly, it's just so bulky and heavy compared to the 20 mil Tamron. This is what it's compared to. And I always thought the 1635 was the best for YouTube because that's what all the YouTubers use, Maddie Havioka and all these other YouTubers that use a 1635 super wide for vlogging. What I realized is that with social media, that 16 millimeter look looks like a vlog. I did some professional shoots with the 1635. This wasn't good. And I always see myself zooming to 20 mil. If I were to restart all over again, I would definitely take the 20 to 40 Tamron. In the end of this video, I will show examples on how this looks like on a shot like this for YouTube. I also do have the Tamron 17 to 28 that I've used a lot. The 20 to 40 is, in my opinion, perfect. So let me show you guys the size different. Let me remove the lens cap of the 17 to 28. So this is the size difference. As you can see, it's really not that much, but it really helps for gimbal use. Uh, let me let me show you. For gimbal use, it's still as good. Even when the barrel is completely outwards, it's still smaller than the 17 to 28. Personally. I really like 35 mil. And that's the main reason why I upgraded to the 1635. So I can so I can zoom out to 35 mil for YouTube talking headshots like videos like these. And I find 35 mil is a staple when you need to record YouTube videos like these. But I'll put the two YouTubers here that I watch a lot and they recommend using a 35 mil. They use 35 mils for all the talking head videos like these. They actually use a 35 f1.8 prime and they typically shoot at f2, f2.2. I normally shoot on the 35 1.8 and I shoot it at f2.2, so I had to bump the ISO. And I noticed that even in- Now my lens, I'm using a 35 1.8. And I stopped down to an F2 in a space that allows me to get the blurry background in the back. But for me, I'm t completely okay with F2.8. I just like having a lens that can kind of do it all. And for me, my do it all lens is this and my 50 1.4 prime Zeiss. It's an old lens, but I use it for all my, I would say my professional photos. In this video, highly recommend 40 for YouTube. I just wanted to keep it short um, because there wasn't that many YouTube videos about it. As usual, I'm gonna do an example of how it looks like. So I'm gonna put this lens, so I'm gonna put this lens on the camera and I'm gonna show you guys how 20 mil versus 40 foot mil looks like. And then I'm gonna put the Tamron 17 to 28 and show you how it looks like. So right now I'm actually shooting at 35 f1.8 with my Sigma 24 to 70. Let me switch it up just so you guys see how it looks like. All right, so this is how it looks like at 20 mil. As you can see, it's still quite wide. And it's perfect for vertical content as well because 20 mil is still quite wide. Um, the popular Instagram, Omar, I don't know how to say his name, but Om God, yeah, something. Anyways, I'll put his Instagram over here. His whole Instagram is built with this lens with the Sony ZV-E1, the Tamron 20 to 40, which is honestly, it makes sense because it's such a light lens, portable lens, easily on a tripod and you can just like, maneuver it very easily. So this is the lens at 20 mil. Let's zoom in to 40 mil and boom, you just don't get this anywhere at 20 mil to 40 mil. I find 40 a bit more punched in. I would typically go at 35 like this. So this is 35, 40, 35. So very, very minuscule, but 35 is what most YouTubers use. And it's what I'll use most of the times for my talking head videos. And if I really want, I can go wide at 20 mil. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna switch right now to the 17 mil and I'm gonna be talking about why I think the 17 mil is too wide for my taste. So let's switch up the lens. All right, so this is now 17 mil. As you can see, it's just too wide and now I can't zoom out to 35 mil. I'm gonna have to zoom out to 28 mil. So I'm gonna show you how 20 mil, 28 mil looks like and this is 28. It still feels just, it still feels a bit wide. It feels more like a 24 mil but if I wanna be more up close and personal, I'm gonna to have to crop in with my sensor, not with the lens. And yeah, it just looks a lot nicer at 35 mil. I find 20, 28 mil still feels a bit far from you guys. So yeah, this is 17 mil with the Tamron. As you can see, it just feels like it's too much. It's just seeing too much. 
you can easily get distracted. You don't know what you're looking at. And at 28, it's just not zoomed in enough. So um, yeah, let me switch out back to the Tamron 20 to 40, just so you guys know how 40 looks like. So now this is what 40 mil looks like. And to be honest, 40 mil is a bit too punched in, but I just like the fact that it can go up to 40 mil. I would go more at 35. So it's even not even that much of a difference, but yeah, I would go at 35 mil and I would do most of my talking head YouTube videos like this. And the fact that it's lighter, cheaper, and newer with the how, how it looks like, I like how the body looks like compared to the 1728. It's just a lot better in my opinion. So that's pretty much it. That's a quick, talking head video why I would recommend the 20 to 40 and the biggest inspo is this Instagram Instagrammer right here Omar Gideon ah, I don't know how to spell his name I'm not looking at his name right now I'm not reading it off his screen or anything but from him he's he's probably the main inspo why I'd recommend this lens so that's pretty much it hope you guys enjoyed hopefully I made you guys make a decision on whether you guys need this lens or not so yeah that's pretty much it I'll catch you guys next time peace